Hi, welcome to the Game Splainer. I'm Jeff the Game Splainer, and today I'm Game Splaining Irish Gage. So, this is Irish Gage. It is set up as a three player game. The essence of the game is an auction game. So, you are auctioning to buy shares of rails, and then you are building the rails that you have shares in to make them produce the most income for you whenever they produce income. So the very first thing that's going to happen is that the first player, let's say it's this player here, each player has $20 to start with, but the first player will take the first company share and will start an auction. The number they must start with is the larger number on that share, so in this case seven pounds. And it's a literal auction, just goes around the table. Once you bow out, you cannot come back in. So this player might say seven, the next one might say eight, nine, and he can have it. So he'll spend his nine money and take the share. That's going to happen for all of the five different companies. So this player will start the next auction. So we're auctioning this one. So he starts at five, six, seven. He doesn't think it's worth seven. He doesn't either, so this guy will get it. If no one bid on a particular share, the starting player gets that share for free, just in that round to kind of get the beginning of the game going so that all five companies are actually owned by someone. So the different things that you can do on your turn is you can place a railway track. So you have three points of railway track that you can play. You can only play within one company. So if it's this player's turn, he can either play orange or purple and he might choose to go orange to start with. So it costs one to put a track onto an area that is easy. It costs another two to put track on an area that is difficult, which is just here. So he's just gone there. That's his three points used up in its entirety. We then move to the next player. The next player can do the same thing with one of his tracks, so red or blue. So they're both coming out of the same spot. So he might send red that direction. So he's using one point for there, one point to go through that city or town, should I say, and one point to go to that next one. And then yellow can do the same, then we come back around and each person is trying choosing what they do. This is a majority of the game is just placing tracks in. So let me just get a few more tracks in. Now, to place this track, so he's going to place on that same spot. He, firstly, he can't place here because he can only have one train on a difficult area of terrain. To place here, it's going to cost him one and a half and also to place here. So where there's already a train, it costs him one and a half. So if he has three points, one half is there and one and a half to there. And it's absolutely legal to place things in like that. Okay, that's enough of the train placement rules. I think you kind of understand what's going on there. You must add to the end of one of the train lines that you have shares in the company of. But let's keep moving forward. You are allowed to, instead of doing what we just did, you can place a colour into one of the cities. So, for example, if it's Red's turn, he's allowed to look into the bag to grab any of the three coloured cubes and place that onto one of the cities that he's currently going to. And that's his entire turn. You'll see why in a second, but that is his entire turn. You can call for dividends. So what that looks like is going into the bag blind, pulling out three cubes, and placing them in their space. Now, what these cubes are saying is any city that has that colored cube on it will score, or will get income, should I say. So, let's go with red first. Red comes through this city, so it's getting four income. It doesn't have any black, so that one scores nothing. It goes to the pink, which is another four income. In order to create income, you must have two of the cities that are the colored. So if, for example, purple had managed to build a line from here to here, he has two cities that are called out. So purple would be getting eight pounds in because he's got two of the whites. Red 
has one, two that are coloured. So he would also be getting eight pounds into that company. Orange, this one doesn't get anything. The pink does. In order for that to actually get scored, however, he has to come through either a town that doesn't have a cube on it or another cube that has been pulled out. The town that doesn't have a cube on it, the town, is worth two money. So orange would be getting six money for, for that. I'll just put that there to remind us what's going on. Red would be getting eight money for its build up and purple would also be getting eight money. That money that each company has brought in is now split between the owners of the shares in the company. At the moment, each of the companies only has one share out. Let's say for example, future game has happened and these shares have actually been purchased out. So, orange, because there's only one owner of those shares, goes to all, goes to that company, or that player, should I say. The red, is owned by this player and this player, which means that the funds that have come in, which is eight money, get split in half, and each of the players gets four money. If there were three of the dividends out, so this one was out as well, each player would get three money. So it's rounded up, not down. And then purple is owned by this one and this one, so once again, they would also get four money each. Because the other train lines haven't been extended through anywhere, they don't get any shares. And that's the dividends. The other thing that you can do on your turn is an auction. So that is, it, say it's this guy's turn, he can go, ah, oh, I'm going to auction, uh, say yellow, and he puts in an initial bid of 12 money, so assuming he's got 12 money there, and the others, it goes around and does the exact same auction as the beginning of the game. So whoever has bid the most would get that in. And that in essence is the game. What you're going to come down to is whenever dividends are drawn, we pull out three and whatever the colors are, they play into what we're trying to build. The only other element that I haven't touched on is if you manage to get a track that joins all of the reds together. So the reds are Galway, Dublin, and Belfast. Let's say red manages to build a track all the way across to there. He has now connected all three of those red cities. Immediately upon that connection, so you don't need to call for another thing, immediately there's a 12 pound dividend paid out to red, which means that this player and this player would both get six pounds each and then the game continues on. You'll notice these bits down the bottom, they are supposed to be keeping track of the total value of the company. So at the moment, Orange's total value is 10. So four for that one, four for that one, and two for that one. Red's total value is four, eight, 12, 14, 18. Purple's total value is eight. Yellow's total value is two, and blue's total value is also two. Uh, just be aware of that and so whenever you're adding train line or cities into one of those spots it's going to upgrade the amount that the dividends per share is worth. At game's end you are literally adding up the money that you've got and the large number on your dividends. So if you have spent £10 you're only getting £6 worth out of that actual dividend at, at game's end. And that in essence is the entire game. The game will go until there are no more cubes in here to be pulled out. So the very last lot of cubes pulled out, maybe only two, maybe three, maybe one. But as soon as that bag's empty, we do the dividends off those cubes as we've already talked about, and then that's game over, adding up how much money you have and the value in the big writing on each of the shares that you have for each company. So look, please go ahead and watch my games play to get a feel for how the game actually plays. If you have any games that you would like to be gamesplained, please shoot me an email to thegamesplainer at gmail.com. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at thegamesplainer to keep up to date with the games I'm playing. Subscribe to my videos to keep up to date with the games I'm gamesplaining. And until next time, enjoy gaming.